Hello, it's John Kamalopoulos from our center here in Athens, Greece, the Laser Vision uh, Aperture Surgery Center. We're going to talk about a very familiar uh, problem for ophthalmologists, pterygium. And its uh, excision uh, dates back to the years of Hippocrates in uh, ancient Greece. We're seeing a gentleman here in his early 60s. Very severe pterygium is very irritating. We can see how it distorts the uh, placido rings in his um, topography of the left eye, maybe contributing some of the withdrawal astigmatism. Similar images on the sine fluke uh, tomography, the pentacam, showing the significant regularity that it causes nasally. And uh, our technique starts, this is peribulbar anesthesia, so I'm uh, injecting here normal saline. It would be 1% uh, xylocaine if this was done under topical. I'm going with my blunt Westcott, so this is very important here, uh, the ones I use for uh, trabeculectomies as well. Very uh, meticulous cautery, very careful not to injure the uh, medial rectus. We can kind of see the fibers of the uh, medial rectus muscle there. And here I'm removing tenons uh, as well. And here I'm using the blunt, the Westcott's to uh, trim. You can pull this off, but sometimes parts of the head of the pterygium may be left behind. So I'm meticulously going in there. We can see how the pterygium is fed with vessels all the way into the cornea. And unfortunately, it erodes the superior layers of the cornea, boneless for sure. We're going to use carefully cauter here as we're very near. You can see the uh, medium rectus there. Uh, I'm going to just very briefly touch bases on those vessels. I don't want to nick one of those. and. Uh, I have a very messy field. I'm going back and trimming all the irregularities left over. It's very important for the uneventful healing to have a very smooth surface. Good hemostasis uh, accomplished with bipolar cautery. Um, and I'm using here a crescent blade to uh, manually smoothen the uh, irregularities left behind by the pterygium head. Very careful here. It's very easy with this maneuver here with my crescent to end up in the anterior chamber. Definitely not uh, our aim here. And this is uh, our technique. Now we're going to cover that deficit with a rotating flap of conjunctiva that we're going to harvest from the superior aspect of the eye. So I'm bloating the conjunctiva here again with normal saline. I'm going to go uh, about three to four millimeters superior of the limbus. Uh, and uh, excise the inferior part of my rotating flap. It's going to have a horizontal length of about 12 millimeters, 12 to 13, so a little bit more than the diameter of the cornea, and a vertical width of about 4 to 5 millimeters seen here. I'm cutting vertically here, and I am uh, now releasing the free edge of my rotating flap. Traditionally, the way I trained both uh, in New York and Boston was to uh, harvest an independent piece of uh, conjunctival autograph from the superior part of the eye, non exposed to the elements and sun, and then do a free graft onto the area where the conjunctival deficit removing the pterygium exists. I'm separating here my graph from tenons. I'm going to remove tenons as well. Special care obviously here not to damage the superior rectus uh, extracular muscle. I'm going in here with my blunt uh, Westcott scissors to uh, trim the tenons. Reason being reduce uh, the chance for hematoma, attain hemostasis, and then I'm going to reapproach as you will see uh, with uh, tenno interrupted uh, sutures, the two edges of the conjunctiva left behind from the flap that I removed from the superior aspect of the eye. So this is uh, tenno nylon number two. I'll use one more in the middle. Uh, thus, uh, taking away the uh, uh, possibility of having a pyogenic granuloma, another mishap that I had to encounter from the area that I had removed in the past, a free graft of uh, conjunctiva. So here I've rotated my flap uh, onto the uh, pterygium 
deficit left behind. And I'm suturing here the nasal part of the conjunctiva. Special care not to involve the plica in all of this, um, especially in the excision of the pterygium. It's another area of concern to involve the plica cellularis. And then uh, there's a lot of mixture of uh, regenerated tissue there. And here I'm connecting uh, and finishing my graft. I'm going to supplement the conjunctiva with uh, mitomycin C 0.02% and triamcinolone to reduce the possibility. So I'm not going to go onto my graft. I'm going to go away into the uh, left behind conjunctiva and inject this mixture of 0.002% mitomycin C, so a second dilution from what we use in uh, tuberculosis. This is another brilliant de uh, device, the Amnion by uh, ISP Surgical, and we can see this three times three centimeter piece, freeze dried, uh, gamma radiation uh, sterilized, which will come in. I know some colleagues uh, have glued this uh, uh, over the eye to help with the healing. I'm uh, more towards uh, putting in these very uh, wide uh, and loosely tightened uh, tendo nylon sutures that will grasp uh, underlying uh, host conjunctiva and uh, big bites on the amnion in order to avoid uh, it uh, being uh, uh, cut or damaged. And uh, the goal here is to maintain the amnion on the surface for as long as possible. It will biodegrade in three to four weeks. And to pursue that goal, I'm will also complete it with a very large bandage lens, like it to be at least 20 to 24 millimeter in diameter thus uh, keeping the amnion in place and um, thus uh, helping have a picture like this. We see a tremendous uh, result, uh, very good vision, a significant reduction of the astigmatism. We can see on the left pre and post the field maps with the OptiView uh, anterior OCT device, seeing how much uh, better the uh, surface is. And I thank you very much for your attention. I hope you found this interesting.